29-year-old Ross Albright, accused of being the mastermind behind the Silk Road website run by an operator dubbed Dread Pirate Roberts, allowing users to purchase drugs online, has been denied bail at this federal courthouse in Lower Manhattan. Albright was arrested at the science fiction section of a San Francisco public library last month and charged with drug dealing, money laundering, computer hacking, as well as murder for hire, accused of hiring hitmen to get rid of an informant and a witness he had allegedly been fearful of. The anonymous drug market website Silk Road was launched in 2011 with over a billion dollars in sales and almost a million customers. The FBI has seized hundreds of thousands of bitcoins, a virtual currency worth tens of millions of dollars. They say that uh, the person operating the website had pocketed about $80 million. They've also dubbed Silk Road one of the most sophisticated and extensive marketplaces on the Internet today. Albright, of course, has pled not guilty on all the charges being made against him, and has, his defense team says the prosecution can't prove that he is who they say he is. Ross, who is living a life in San Francisco in a modest way, and they're claiming... It, it, that he's living in a manner of a, of a head of a cartel. The distinctions between Ross Albrecht and the head of a cartel, you don't have to see too many movies to, to recognize what the differences are here. At Wednesday's hearing, family and friends pledged over $1 million so that Ross could be released on bail. His family offered up their home. Thousands of letters of support were sent in. However, the judge decided that he will remain in jail. I thought it was the wrong decision. Why tell us a little bit? He wouldn't have been a flight risk, and he's never been and is not a danger to anyone. While the prosecution says the University of Texas graduate ran an extensive criminal enterprise for the last two and a half years, one of the aspects the defense plans to question is the NSA's involvement in this case. If we're talking about NSA surveillance being used, then the question becomes twofold. One is whether it was done properly, in other words, according to statute, as we've seen from the releases of opinions by the, financial, uh, the, the, foreign, the foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court that the government and NSA have been regularly out of compliance with even what they're authorized to do. And then the question even one step further back is whether, even if they're authorized under statute, whether that statute is constitutional. With lots of questions yet to be answered for now, this case is only in its first stages. Anastasia Churkina, RT, New York.